Hello, my name is Rachel Yates. I'm applying for the fall 2024 degree in clinical mental health counseling with the College of Education. Thank you for taking my application. I would like to be a licensed counselor. The reason I'd like to do that is because I think that counselors are people who can make this world a better place or help this world become a better place. I think counselors can do that by stepping into the breach whenever there is a rupture for a person's selfhood or a person's life that becomes emotionally too, too fraught to handle all alone. I think that a counselor can, in relationship, help a person find their own ground again and their own standing of what it is they want. And I think a good counselor can provide healthy resources to help that person develop skills to go on and get what it is they would like. What is it that has brought me to this aspiration? Well, I am the child of a mentally ill parent. My parent no longer is living, but I grew up with someone who was diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar mood disorder, but I was never told this. So all I could see was my mother was alcoholic. So this was a very disruptive and interruptive experience to try to grow up with. I would like to be able to reach out to young people who are perhaps going through experiences like this and to let them know that as bizarre as some things can be, they aren't alone and they're not out of the realm of compassion and love. So an example of a time, there will of course are many examples. One in particular is when I was 17, I was in my living room in a suburban house with my sister. My father had just passed away. My mother came out of the bedroom with a loaded gun. This was not the first time. She was pointing the gun at my sister's belly and they were struggling over this gun. Somehow, even though I was terrified, I was able to go to my mother and take the gun out of her hand to dig it out of her fist and scatter the bullets in the yard. So in real time, the way I experienced that or handled that experience was by uh, interrupting her access to this weapon. But in unreal time, that's a lifetime of trying to sort of work that experience into your own life in a reasonable way. I went on to become a person who really loved literature and I got a lot out of reading and I learned how to then write myself and was able to get a lot out of expressing and articulating these experiences for myself. And then I was able to find healthy relationships to help me um, go on and have a very worthwhile life. So that's a personal conflict. You can read more about that. I've, I wrote the first... Um, creative nonfiction dissertation at the University of North Texas is called Damned Good Daughter. And I was able to demonstrate how I worked out some of that experience in those pages. So an interpersonal example would be um, when I was a professional, I was uh, a lecturer and an administrator in the writing program. And I was asked to come to a meeting and I thought it meant because they cared about what I was doing for the program. So I anxiously prepared a little presentation and politely waited for my chance to give it and then found out I was being ambushed at the time by my colleagues or one colleague who was trying to make it look as if I had been unfair in the way I signed um, classes. So at the moment, I did not fight them. I did not accept, I didn't, um, take anything ill. Uh, I allowed everything to play out the way it did and then I went out of that meeting and I got my records together and I showed that over the past three or four years I had assigned the classes in a certain manner and it turned out that it was exactly uh, equal. So I was able to um, withstand the emotional pressure and then refer back to just records that would demonstrate in a very disinterested manner, what was really happening, and we could then diffuse the whole situation. So that's how that, that's one example of an interpersonal conflict. 
So an example of what it is I do to demonstrate the commitment to counseling. Well, when I was doing my creative nonfiction dissertation, I became interested in writing and healing or writing as a form of healing. So I began to read, um, I read Judith Herman's work about trauma and recovery. I read James Pennybaker and his experiments and how writing does connect physically with healing. I became certified to do journal therapy through um, Kathleen Adams Journal Therapy or Center for Journal Therapy. So this is something I continue to be interested in and I really would like to know what's going on in the field right now so I can bring my skill set up to speed and really apply a healthy, vigorous skill set. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The rest, um, what else is going on now is currently I am a CASA, and a CASA is a court appointed special advocate. This is a person who works as a volunteer for a nonprofit organization on behalf of children in the child welfare system. Whenever Child Protective Services removes a child from their home, then a, course, a court case is opened and that child is in foster care. Well, when a court case is opened, the judge may assign a guardian ad litem or a court-appointed special advocate. I have been that for since 2018, for almost six years now. I have served seven different children as they have gone through their cases. A guardian ad litem has authority to advocate for the child educationally, medically, and therapeutically so that the advocate can visit the child in school, can speak with the child's medical care providers, can see the child in placement, and can write a report, in fact does write reports for court hearings so that the judge is able to um, get information about how that child is doing and the CASA can give recommendations for that child's best interest. And that's separate from what Child Protective Services may want, what the parents may want, what the placement may want, and what any of the lawyers may want. It's an independent investigation and it is a case-long relationship. Often a child who is experiencing this kind of disruption in their life We'll have more than one CPS caseworker, we'll have more than one lawyer, we'll have different teachers, but that CASA stays with that child from the beginning to the end. So I've done that, and that's what I, and my experience with this has um, shown me that often there is a need for therapists for these children because they get assigned services, and some of the services often include counseling and that there's a need for counselors here. So my idea is perhaps I could do that as a counselor and work with children who are associated with the foster care system and are in need of therapy. I think that I would like to work with adolescents and help them navigate their experiences so that they can go on and be as uh, successful and healthy as they can be. So thank you for listening to my interview and best wishes to you as you make your choices. Thank you. Goodbye.